Are you tired of being let down due to your incompetent allies? Does it hurt when you get into an unwinnable war and have to give up your provinces? Well, maybe today is the day we change things and discuss how you can be a better E4 player using the military strategies in the book, Art of War. Now, for those of you who don't know, Art of War is a collection of notes written in the 5th century by a man of the name Sun Tzu. He's become a bit of a meme in recent years, and you see lots of troll quotes in the YouTube comments. It was said Sun Tzu was a Chinese military advisor, and the story behind him and his book is really interesting, and he has influenced nearly 2,000 years of human war history, which we'll discuss in this video. Even around the time of E4, in the Daimyo era, a leader of one of the Daimyos who didn't lose a battle was obsessed with the Art of War book. How do you behave in battle, and more importantly, how do you win? Secondly, given the fact E4 is overall about playing wide and winning your wars, the book actually has some useful advice on how you can play E4 using these military strategies in Art of War. Perhaps in some ways this book applies to multiplayer scenarios more, but it definitely still can be applied to single player campaigns. Maybe you can even take some of these military lessons for your own personal life, as many successful entrepreneurs definitely have used this book over time. Also, do you want an Ulm fan meetup? If we get to 100,000 subscribers, this will be the case, so make sure to subscribe. Right, let's get into the video. So firstly, this book is split into 13 chapters, and we'll go through every single one of them and see how it relates to EU4. The first chapter focuses on the planning stage for war, and Sun Tzu believed a pre-conflict plan of action was key to success when you start a war. He effectively breaks it down into three categories, which is firstly morale and whether people believe in their leader, next is weather and terrain, and are you fighting on favourable terrain, or is there a better place to take your stand, and finally identifying the strengths of your leader. Does he have wisdom and courage, and is he organised? Sun Tzu believed that these three elements in your pre-conflict plan could beat a superior force if the elements are superior to your enemies. Surprisingly, in a simplified way, this entirely relates to EU4. Is your country stable enough for war without rebels rising up? Is it worth declaring a war when you're in negative stability? And what sort of terrain do you want to fight in? Perhaps in EU4, it's better for you to wait until we try and take a mountain fort. Finally, what are the strengths of your general in EU4? If your general has a 6 shock, then perhaps it's better to wait to be on the offensive. What's the AI's behaviour, and how can you exploit it? What's the relative strength of each side, which you can check in the ledger? In EU4, most people don't think about this in such detail, but following the advice of the first chapter may save you from a defeat in a war, and you can really get to grips of how you can defeat your enemy in EU4, particularly when it's superior. The next three chapters of Art of War encompass how you wage war and what strategies and tactics you should use. When you declare, you should know how good your troops are in comparison to your enemy. In EE4, is your troop composition correct, or do you perhaps have too much cavalry, which weakens your army and may be a deciding factor in a close battle? Sun Tzu also recommends that you be patient and you should only attack the opposing army when there's no alternative. Perhaps in E4, it's good to attack when your enemy's armies are split off from each other. I definitely think this applies particularly in the multiplayer scene, when you're just so stressed and you forget about the discipline advisor or consolidating your regiments. Always keep an eye on your enemy forces. What is their composition, who leads them and where are they going? If your enemy outnumbers you, then you should hide. Plus, if they significantly outnumber you, then you should escape. In terms of tactics, Sun Tzu recommends you keep the egos below in check, but this definitely doesn't really apply to EE4, and I guess this is an understandable limitation of the game. Historically though, I can think of the Battle of Hastings, when the Saxons lost their valuable defensive position and charged down the hill, being killed by the Normans. The Saxons having an ego certainly didn't help them, however, perhaps the ego of your enemy can be something used against them. Lure your enemy into your lands, scorch earth around the forts, and let the attrition do the job. Always engage the weakest army. The next three chapters of Art of War consist of the use of energy, the weakness and strengths of your enemy, and manoeuvring. When we talk about energy, Sun Tzu means you should create a well-organised unit, and this more efficient unit can overcome a less organised, numerically superior opponent. A historical example I can think of is when the Romans used a wedge formation against the numerically superior Britain force of Boudicca, and the Romans won despite all the odds. 
I guess a new form. Make use of your troops in an efficient way, and look after them. Losing energy or resources in E4, such as manpower or prestige, may lead to a neighbouring rival attacking you, particularly in a multiplayer scenario. So look at the bigger picture and don't get tunnel vision. Appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. Moving on to the next chapter. Understand the strengths of your enemy and use their weaknesses against them. A horde, for instance, in E4 will almost always wish to fight in the steps and it may be better to lure them out and fight in a territory that they are weaker in. Again, this probably applies more to a multiplayer scenario. Although, given that your rivals can see your stats, it's very difficult to deceive your enemies in EU4. Sun Tzu also finally talks in Chapter 7 about manoeuvring. Historically, forcing your army to march 30 miles can lead to significant loss of men, but moving rapidly can give you an advantageous position when fighting your enemy. You can see this when Howard Godwinson or Hannibal did the impossible manoeuvring and marched rapidly, which took their enemy by surprise, giving them a significant advantage when in battle. In EU4 this is somewhat true, and it's important to place your armies strategically so they can back each other up, and it could be the difference between winning and losing a big battle. Nothing is more difficult than the art of manoeuvre. The next three chapters encompass a variation of tactics, disciplined marches, and understanding the terrain you fight on. In terms of a variation of tactics, be prepared and ready to change your tactics at a moment's notice. Make it difficult for them to penetrate your capital in EE4, with other forts in the way. Have enough gold to hire mercenaries if a war is more difficult than you originally fought. The next two chapters of a disciplined army when marching and studying terrain isn't particularly useful to EE4 and is far more relevant to reality. It's not like in EE4 you have thousands of men dying if you march through a mountain in game. Attrition is definitely understandably downplayed in EE4. The last three chapters however are more relevant to EE4. In chapter 11 Sun Tzu goes into a deep analysis of the type of battle scenarios you faced and recommends never engaging in certain battle scenarios. For instance, you shouldn't fight when you're encircled by rough terrain and you're having to fight in a swamp, and the only way out of this scenario is to fight your way out. As you can imagine, psychologically, your troops feel unsafe in these type of scenarios and are probably going to be less effective against the enemy. I suppose in EU for multiplayer, it's better to pick your province for battle carefully and attack your enemy allies from behind, isolating your enemy within your territory and fighting them in fabled terrain, hopefully leading to a stack wipe. Chapter 12 is an attack by fire, and Sun Tzu recommends you burn your enemy soldiers and destroy supplies and weapons. Definitely relevant in reality, but in game it's not really significant. The final chapter of this book goes into detail on the use of spies and how information and knowledge of your enemy is power. This in reality would be sabotaging your enemy and give you a significant advantage since you know your whereabouts of your rivals and their weaknesses. In EE4, I suppose you have a ledger to gain this sort of spy information, as well as building a spy network, potentially being able to support rebels within your rival's nation. In multiplayer as well, there's a different aspect to it. You could secretly form an alliance with your enemy's rival and gain information of their next moves, hopefully getting your enemy's ally to stab him in the back. So all in all, it's definitely interesting that this book does give some relevant knowledge in how you become a good EU4 player. And while some of the book isn't relevant, it can make you into an E4 military master. I also hope whatever battles you are fighting in your life, you can perhaps take some of these lessons from the book and hopefully have success and be victorious in whatever you do. Thank you guys for watching, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. I'll also be streaming on Twitch near the upload time of this video. Shout out to our Patreons, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76 and Xiaomi. Your support means a lot guys.